It's only 25 laps. So, here I am, like 19, right? Uh, so, the AI are set for the fastest, so they artificially, it's, it's not like they have gears, you know, they're, they're run by computer software. So their acceleration is greater than yours. And since I'm using essentially a three-year setup, you know, they have better acceleration on the restart. So the key when you're racing against AI is not lose the draft. I have fast the setup now, so I'm not qualifying last anymore. I qualify 19th out of 39, which is good. You're in the middle of the pack. You've got guys in front and behind you, so you not no danger of losing reps. See this, see, no one backs out. I, I can't tell that we're four wide. You know? And usually somebody does back out at this point, but nobody backs out. You can expect AI to be the dumbest guys, like the dumbest guys you race with. <laughs> Don't be that guy. I'm on the brake more than the gas. And, well, on the brake a lot. Three laps. Okay. Got to brake a lot in the turn. But do it smoothly, you see? You know, I'm not hitting anybody. And I'm not, you know, falling way back. You drive like you're on the highway, you know? You merge smoothly. Be smooth. You won with the car. Yeah, that's hitting the brake. Especially, um, in cup, but, you know, it's going to be a little bit more than truck. You get more of an aero issue. See, that's like aero, and also when I hit the brake. You gotta be prepared for that, you know? It's gonna go left on it. It's gonna go right on it. But you can't grab the wheel and yank it, because then it's just wreck. You know, you gotta be smooth. So you're gonna move back and forth, like you watch them in real life, you know? Yeah, it moves you all over the damn place. The key is to anticipate. Understand what's going on and how. And it's a break. So I got my brake bias set low. The harder you hit it, the more it'll want to turn you right when you're above 50%. Alright, so this is way too easy. That's a really good setup for this on and how they are. on the highest setting, you guys can do something. But as you'll see, there are flaws with the game. It could be just a track side. They just follow the car you're on around the track, but it's just only online. So, the rest is pretty boring until I mess up in the pits. I just took too many tires. In Heat 5, one of the updates from Heat 4 is now you have some cars that will use alternate strategies, as they call it. Instead of getting full fuel and four tires at every stop, if it's smart to take two tires or take less gas, they will. So it forces you to you know, manage your pit stops better. Don't take any more gas than you know you than you'll know you'll need. I mean, like if uh, if there's you know six laps left and you got to take eight eight laps of gas, or you got to leave with eight laps of gas, that's that's fine. That's good. 
but you don't need 20 laps of gas if there's only 8 laps left. Same thing with tires, is knowing which tracks you can do two tires, how to do two tires. You know, that comes in handy. For the most part, don't. You know, Daytona and Talladega are the exceptions. Two tires is more the rule than the exception. But um, other tracks, it you got to take four tires. You know, unless you're on a lap by yourself, and everybody, you know, everybody's a lap down. So here, everybody, everybody takes two tires. And I came with the second group, so I had nobody that I could, you know, really run with. Yep, bye. Oh, the guy behind me took four tires. That didn't matter, because he didn't run my line. So, here I am. I came out in 30th, and I'm just trying to get as many spots as possible. Didn't manage that many, because... Unlike in real life, all these guys are on the side by side and no one's drafting and it's just a shit show. But um anyway, so uh yeah. So you know Daytona and Talladega is it's, it's totally different. Um they're easier but they're also harder. A lot of people oh they're easy. Well they're easy if you only think all you gotta do is put your foot down and drive. But it's a lot more than that. I mean every track you know has its perks. From Martinsville to a road course, you know, um, and learning the differences is key to being good at that particular track. Coming up on the ARCA race on Monday, I'll be uh, using it as a test bed. This is a a newer setup for Xfinity. And I'm not 100% on it. It has its advantages. Gotta do more testing. It's only 25 laps, so it's like almost just like a fuel run, so. Or 30 laps, so. Not that hard. But the key takeaways here is the fast way around is on the yellow line. Don't oversteer it because you end up hitting the apron a lot. Um, uh, don't don't run high unless you have to. You know, like if all the guys in front of you are running high, but you know, try to get them to run low because the shortest way around the track is also the fastest way. You got a good setup, or you got, you know, somebody, somebody who um, is fast. You know, get up on his bumper, not through the turns. Be within a half a car length through the turns. See, these guys are too far back, so they're not helping me all through the turns. So I'm slowing down too much, and then it takes half the straightaway for them to catch up to me to give me a push, and you know, so just slow, slow, slow. You're gonna push somebody, only push them on the straightaways. Uh, unless unless you you're really advanced, don't push them in the turns. Um, even experienced people can easily wreck the way the game is. Just one little slip, arrow slip, and next thing you know you turn the guy and you're both wrecking and everybody's passing him. So Reserve those for, you know, desperation moves. Or you're coming to the end of the race. But even then, you know, it, it all depends on what the situation is. Because if the guy in front of you gets into trouble, you got to trust him. If he gets into trouble and you're pushing him, you're, uh... 
you're both in trouble. So you gotta, you know, trust the guy you're pushing or accept, you know, whatever happens because he's facing these turns that are two of you. And communication is key, so talking to each other and, you know, working out that stuff is important. I know a lot of guys don't talk, but get used to it. Because you don't have a team, you don't have a pit, pit crew, um, you don't have a crew chief, you don't have a spotter. Uh, the guy that they give you is, is late, so you can't really rely on him about 60-70% of the time. So, you know, it's just you and the other guys in the lobby that are going to keep each other from getting into stupid situations. So, you're as much responsible for yourself as somebody else. That's how we race in MRL. Um, it works really well when it works. When you know, people don't work it, it can get, it can get really bad for no reason. As I'm sure everybody's experienced. But we try to avoid that. Coming to line. Yelling at the guys. Like, why are you going high? And that's where they go high. Why are you going high? It's like they're programmed with the with the old line from uh, 20 years ago, dubbed the Earnhardt line. Well, thank you for all that. Uh, 26, not gonna help me much. Fastest lap don't really help that much. Yep. So short races, one mistake, you can be ass out. So pay attention and communicate. 